Howdy, everyone. All right, so like I had said in my last video, I have uh, gone ahead and put the epoxy on the inside of the bottom cowling, which is on the other side of the airplane on the floor. This is my top cowling uh, that I had done a little uh, added epoxy work on the inside. So now I've decided to go back to my wheel pant fairings. Now you may remember quite a while ago, um, my other videos, I had talked about wheel pants and the gear leg fairings and the intersection fairings and things like that. I had gone through the layouts as far as making the, getting the plane level fore and aft and left and right laying down plumb bobs to get a, um, a center line down the center of the fuselage and taking measurements and laying down tape and trying to get the wheel pants on parallel to the fuselage, parallel to each other, the same angle between the two wheel pants, getting the gear leg fairings on and getting them straight, all that stuff that you have to do with the stock wheel pants and the gear leg fairings. Well, I've decided I'm not going to keep any of that. I'm going to start over from scratch, and I've decided to go with some aftermarket uh, parts. The first thing is I'm going to a larger wheel, a larger tire, and larger brakes. So these are Matco wheels and brake assemblies. I'll show you these parts in more detail when I get to them. Right now, I just have everything taken out of the box. So these are uh, six inch wheels. They're just like the smaller wheels that come with the Vans kit, those wheels. They're exactly the same. They're just a bigger size. Uh, this is the, the rotor, the brake rotor, which is different than the, the, the smaller brakes supplied with Vans, the Vans kits. Like I said, I'll get into this more um, when I get that far into the the, uh, the rebuild. The tires are bigger. These are uh, six by six tires. So the reasoning is multi-fold. The biggest reason is that I wanted, I want more ground clearance between the tire and the wheel pan. Now, of course, you can modify things to make that happen with the stock parts. But I had already done all of my setup and had everything cut, shaped, reinforced, dimpled, bolted, screwed. Everything was done. And I wasn't happy with the distance from the ground to the wheel pants. I was never too keen on, in my opinion, how small these tires are. So I wanted something bigger. I wanted a little bit more ground clearance. I wanted a little bit bigger tire. I just wanted a little bit of a comfort factor knowing that I will be landing off of paved runways from time to time. I want the option to go into some places that may not have a paved runway and be a little bit more confident. I'm not going to rip stuff off. The other reason was, like I said, my when I went through the process of doing the stock wheel pants and the gear leg fairings, I wasn't entirely happy with that entire process. Everything just seemed to be non-precise. Um, when everything was together, I wasn't completely happy with the way that things fit. I wasn't completely happy with the symmetry from one side to the other as far as alignments and how things looked. Um, just simple things like that. I'd, overall, I just wasn't pleased. Nothing sat well with me, so I wanted to make a change. So I'm going aftermarket. So this is uh, from a place called Sky Designs. And they provide the wheel pants, the gear leg fairings, uh, the lower intersection fairing, and the gear leg fairing is all one piece. It's carbon fiber. They're all car carbon fiber. Um, and then they'll also bundle that with the appropriate wheels and brakes. So I bought the entire kit, the, the gear leg fairings with the incorporated 
lower intersection fairing, carbon fiber. The wheel pants, larger wheel pants, different shape wheel pants, carbon fiber. The wheels and the brakes. And then all of the custom hardware all comes with the kit. These brackets and different spacers and the nuts and bolts, everything. And written instructions. So I'm diving into that. And that's what I'm working on. That's what I'm working on right now. So one of the first things that you do is you the kit comes with these four mounting brackets that you see here. Uh, they come just like you see them. The only thing that you need to do is some edge finishing and you have to final size the holes, just like with the Vans kits. All of the pre-punched holes are slightly undersized. You have to drill them out to the appropriate size. And then you have to do you have to do your countersinking for nut plates. Here are the nut plates on the back side. Just like we've done in the past. You have to countersink for the uh the flush head rivets, and you have to countersink the actual holes um, for for screw size eight head. Now these brackets hold the carbon fiber wheel pants in place, and the wheel pants come already dimpled. The dimples are molded into the carbon fiber when the part is made. So these dimples are not for screw heads; they're actually to for the dimples in the wheel pants to nest into but the instructions say to make them at least as big for a number eight screw head and these are just a little bit deeper just like we've done in the past right you go to the screw head size basically and then another five to seven five to nine thousandths deeper roughly so that's what I'm working on now. I've got all of these. These four brackets are now prepped. They've all been countersunk appropriately for nut plates and for the dimples to nest into. And I'm just going through the process of doing the riveting of the nut plates. After that, I think the next step is to start working on the brakes. And I'll have to bring them up and I'll show you those when I get to that point. But I'm just getting started on this aftermarket stuff. And I want to document it just because um, I may or may not add this to my channel. I'm not sure. But I just want to have everything document, documented just in case. All right. So let's get into it. I'll get these things riveted and I'll talk to you guys later. Howdy, everyone. All righty. So... I am working on this uh, wheel brake, wheel, what is it, wheel brake tire, uh, gear leg fairing, wheel fairing modification. So what I had to do initially, I was uh, working on these brackets that you see here. Like I said, it was just a matter of uh, doing the machine countersinking and then riveting on the individual nut plates. So those are done, and I'm, I have moved on to working on the brakes, and what I needed to do is disassemble my current wheel setup. You need to use this piece here, which is part of the Vans kit. This needs to be incorporated into your this new setup that I'm putting together. So obviously in order to use this, I had to take it off of the airplane. So uh, there are some subtle differences. This is the new brake. Let me put this on here real quick. So here is the new brake. This is the old brake. This is the brake that came with uh, the Vans kit. This is what I did. I used to have on my airplane with the smaller wheels. Um, I think so. The main body is different. This main body here has a different part number. So I think this is a little bit different. I haven't looked at it that close because, quite frankly, I don't really care if they're different. Uh, the most obvious difference is the way that they go together here and the way that this pad mounts. You can see the difference between this pad. The bolts come through and this part here is threaded where the bolts go in. This is a little bit different. The bolts go in the other way 
and there's a spacer in there. Uh, it's just slightly different. Um, I think these pieces are identical. I believe the pistons are identical. The O-rings are identical. Just subtle differences. So this is, again, this is the old brake caliper setup for the stock vans, wheels, and this is the new setup that I'll be using with my new wheels. I did incorporate the... Uh, the service bulletin that Vance had put out about uh, upgrading to the higher temperature O-rings. I had bought the O-rings for these, and at some point I had planned on taking the wheels apart and swapping out the O-rings. But when I found out about this new setup, this aftermarket wheel fairing stuff, luckily, like I said, the piston and the O-rings are identical between the two. So this has now been, both of these have now been fitted with the new high temp uh, Viton O-rings. So that's been accomplished. So next up in the instructions, since I have these brackets done, I need to assemble this part of the brake onto the hub with these spacers. This is not the correct setup. I'm just using it as an example. So like I said, I had to disassemble my wheels and brakes to get to this part. So when you look at the instructions, there, there's a, a diagram here. And what I find to be a lot more helpful is this picture here. This picture is a lot more useful, I think, because it shows you the orientation of everything. So you can see the brake plate, if you will, is here. Then on the inboard side of that is your hub. And then on the inboard side of that are your spacers. And what I want to make note of is when you look at this brake bracket, you'll see that there's an offset. There's these spacers on this side, which are a lot thicker than the spacer on this side. So you have to make sure you get this oriented correctly, either this way or this way. And that's where this photograph really helps. You can see those spacers right here. So just make sure you get this orientation correct. So while doing that, I was trying to get this bolted together. And long story short, I realized that these spacers fit around this hub very snugly very tight they wrap around it like this and they get bolted to it the problem is this is a welded piece and you have a little bit of a fillet weld around this bottom area here and that interferes with this bottom edge this sharp edge here of this piece and when you put these on and you try to bolt it the bolts don't go in the, the bolts start to bind because this piece is kind of rocking on this fillet weld around here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take all four of these pieces and I'm going to chamfer out this inner edge here so that it will nest cleanly on the hub. So just going through this process for the first time, these are the things that I'm having to deal with. Make sure you get the orientation of this piece correct. Maybe make sure you get the orientation of how all of these go together. Does this go on this side? Does it go on this side? Do these mount on this side or do they mount on the bottom? Do these spacers, the, the larger spacers, do they go inboard or outboard? You know, make sure you get this mounted back toward the tail instead of toward the front. And then, of course, like I said, I've noticed that these don't want to nest very well on, on this hub because of the fillet weld. So I'm going to deal with that. Um, and then, of course, like I said, if you're inclined, this is a good time to do the O-ring change if you want to do that. So uh, let me work with these, uh, these spacers a little bit, see if I can't get this all to, to come together nicely. And I'll talk to you guys here in a minute. 